Okay guys, J. Prada Performance here. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick update on this 53 International. So, you can see, I don't, you know, if, I don't know if you watched the other videos, but if you remember how ugly looking this cab was, so hey, it's all one color now, so that always makes it look better. Uh, so I've got it in primer, I haven't sanded it out yet. I did, you know, a fair amount of hammer and dolly work on it, I, best I could. I mean, I'm not, you know, full disclosure, I'm not a pro body guy at all, I'm very much a novice. And if you've been following this series, it's just kind of about, you know, maybe giving you a little inspiration. And the point of it is just, you know, hey, we're not trying to be perfect here. We're just trying to get this done. Uh, want it to look nice, but just, you know, wanted to get it done. And uh, so I got the cab in here in the spray booth now. Last time we talked about this dolly, uh, just real, you know, Real uh, redneck kind of deal, but uh, we're great because in this building it's old. I had to, I had to go up a ramp, go around to the front of the building, and then come in through these big doors behind here, go through the parking lot. So I had no problem pushing this in here myself. Uh, very simple, and, and it worked. It did the job, so I'm happy. I just I put a ratchet strap around here so that uh, it wouldn't fall off the dolly and um, rolled it right in, piece of cake. Uh, I got this old lift here. Lift still works, but the arms are seized in place, so the wheels are kind of stuck on that, so I need to do something with this old lift. You know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with these old in-ground lifts, but Man, it's a big deal if you want to remove one. I call the lift guy and they basically got to come in here and chisel up the floor and bring a crane of some sort in here. And there's all this environmental to do with it and because of the oil in the ground. And uh, we're inside city limits here. So, yeah, after talking to him, I'm leaving it the hell alone. I might, I might cut these arms off or something, you know. It's... Not really, I don't think it's safe to use. Probably wasn't safe to use when it was new, but that was back in the days when men were men, you know. Uh, so anyways, yeah, you know, a wise guy sent me an email and uh, goofing on me on this body dolly and he had sent me a picture of this and I guess it photoshopped in here, Speedmaster. You know, I said, hey man, Speedmaster stole this design too. You know, just, you know, kidding around, being a goof. But um, I gotta be honest with you, I, I appreciate the humor. You know, that was, that was pretty good. Uh, but I was glad to see they put Speedmaster on it this time and it didn't say broader performance. So uh, this uh, Dolly design is public domain, so if anybody wants to steal this, I have not patented it or anything, so uh, I'm very freely given this design out. So, you know, if anybody wants to make a knockoff and, you know, maybe have these made in China real cheap or something, you know, you can do the whole thing with the wheels for what I paid for just the lag bolts. Uh, hey, have at it, you know. Uh, maybe I'll buy one from you. So, anyways, um, just thought I'd share that little piece of humor with you there, but... So I've got this in uh, primer. I haven't um, sanded it yet. And you know, it was so, you know, the finish on it was so rough and spotty. It was very hard to see where the defects were and things. And you know, and I don't know any of you guys are getting older like me, but I don't know if you kind of noticed that you know, when I was younger, I could see everything, you know, uh, and I knew right way to Bondo and uh, Hammer Dolly, you know, whatever, but now that I'm getting older, I find myself, the eyes don't work as good, so you just kind of go around and you feel, oh yeah, there's a little, there's a little low spot there, uh, oh yeah, there's a high spot, low spot, you know what I mean, I can, I can feel things better than I can see them, you know, but... Um, you know, now that this is primed, like, and I think you can see it, but there's a little dip here. Uh, 
this was, uh, you know, being a pickup truck, this area here was very beat up. Uh, this is primarily where I did my hammer and dolly work, and, you know, I couldn't see this before it was prime, but I can feel it too, but there's a, you know, there's a little bit of a uh, dipped in area there. You know, and I didn't worry about anything below about here because all this gets covered by the bed. You know, that's another thing too, keep these things in mind where, you know, if you were just gonna really go all out and just really try to get this whole section here done, well, do realize that the bed covers most of it. So some of that's a waste of time in my opinion. Um, again, we're trying to do minimum effort job here. This isn't concourse restoration, but I've got to decide, you know, okay, do I want to fix this or not? How fussy do I want to get? You know, because I, again, I, I think I cut myself off, but, you know, this area here, people, all the years of people shoving things into the bed, and you know how it is, this area always gets hit. You know, sometimes I've seen I've seen guys throw some in the back of the truck and bust their windows out the back and things like that. So these back areas of the truck get pretty beat up and this was no exception. Uh, so I've got a little more work to do there maybe. I just have to decide, you know, am I gonna live with it or not? You know, cause again, I'm not trying to be perfect here, but I want it nice. Uh, you know, there was a, uh, and this is looking pretty good now. I might see one or two little spots, but I didn't see this before, but after I got the first coat of epoxy primer on it, I was like, oh yeah, I got a lot I gotta fix there. I still see one spot. Uh, I may fix it, I may not, I don't know. Uh, so, you know, it's coming along. It's not finished yet, but uh, and, you know, here, too, an emblem goes here, uh, another emblem, and then pretty much anything from here down doesn't matter because there's a fender that covers it. So, you know, not a bad cab to work on. You don't really have a lot of real estate to worry about. Um, I had put, I put a little fill here. There was a spot here where something was leaded in and it was a little bit messed up, so I did some fill work there. Not a lot of fill on it, you know. I'll be honest with you, kind of my mentality is, you know, and where I'm not, you know, I'm not a good, I'm not a good body guy. I can't sit here and get all these dents out and not use fill, and I don't want to do lead. That's just a lot of work. I've never done it before, but I've seen guys do it. It just looks like a lot of work, and. On this project here, again, I just want to get it done. Uh, you know, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, firewall, you know, far cry from what it was. Got a lot of holes in this thing. I don't know what all these things were that went through the firewall, but I'm not going to take the time to weld up all these holes or anything. Just whatever I don't use, I'll just put some plugs in it. You know, they got caps and things you can use. I, I don't care. You know, it's not, uh, again, this is not something that's going to be going to, you know, try to win the Riddler Award or something like that. It's just never going to happen. Not with somebody like me restoring it. So, um, and maybe this is you too. You just want a nice driver like I do, you know, so I'll just, whatever of these holes we don't use, we'll just get some nice uh, caps for it and, and that'll be fine there. Um, this here, this is where the spotlight came through. Uh, we were talking about this in another video, and I know I said I was going to weld that up. Well, guess what? I talked myself out of it. Uh, I got lazy, and I thought, well, if I could find a spotlight, that would be kind of cool to put one back on. So I'll see if I can do that. If not, I'm just going to make a, a plate to cover this. Uh, just make a nice polished aluminum plate or something to cover that. Uh, that way when I go to car shows, everybody go, what the hell is this? You know how these car show guys are. They like to criticize your work because they've got a car sitting in the garage for 15 years that they'll never finish. So they have to lash out at the guy that 
you know, halfway finished his and drove it there. Uh, so the floor is uh, very dusty and dirty, but I used my favorite uh, rust oleum, rusty metal primer on it, and then I used a, I'll show you this in a second, but uh, this stuff was really cheap. It was like 80 bucks for a gallon. Uh, it was made by Nason, which used to be DuPont, now owned by a company named Exalta, but uh, Nason's kind of their lower end line, and it's a chassis coat black. A lot of people make a similar product to that these days, but my local paint store had it. It was really reasonable, and and I, you know, I asked them, I says, ah, this stuff work any good? Ah, yeah, a lot of guys use it. We sell a lot of it. Like, what's it cost, you know? It's like 80 bucks for a gallon. It's pre-mixed. You don't put a hardener or a thinner in it or anything. You just dump it in the gun and shoot it. And Yeah, you got to be honest, you know, I was working in here a lot. Uh, not really trying to be friendly to it or anything, but um, it's pretty glossy, which I don't know if it's a good thing or not. It's not anymore, but... It's, you know, it's durable. Uh, I was in here sanding inside this cab and everything quite a bit and sliding a bucket around and, you know, my dirty shoes and all that. And, I, you know, it's not scratching or anything. It's not flaking up and seemed to adhere real well. And uh, this is going to get covered up with a carpet, so, it, you know, I don't care. But it's a durable finish, it seems. So I've got, I'm going to paint inside here. I uh, just, up here, this is going to be covered with the headliner. Um, I just used rusty metal primer on that top there because it was kind of rusty and I wanted to just use something cheap and easy. Uh, I did a spray can on that and I uh, did that. That'll be fine, you know, good enough. Uh, so I did some sanding. You can see I wore through a bit. In some spots, I'll probably spray like a seal of coat in here to try to help hide some more stuff and before I paint it. Uh, again, I'm not looking for perfection, but this will get the body color inside here. So, I want it to look somewhat decent, uh, and I think it will, but... Anyways, yeah, that's where I'm at, and... Uh, Probably next video I'll have this finished and get it out of the spray booth. Uh, start working on the frame. I want to get the frame prepped up so I can set this cab back on the frame. That's probably my next goal. And I've got, I have not done the hood yet. I still have to do that. Uh, but I want to get the cab back on and uh, so here, there's a cover that goes in here that bolts on, and then there's another cover that bolts on here. Uh, I'll paint those, bolt those on. Uh, there's some pieces that go up here and cover this that are going to get painted the body color. So I'll paint those. I took that off, and uh, I'll paint those separately. And those will be nice. I can fit those in the sandblaster. Uh, they're thick metal. You know, I don't have to worry about whopping it and doing much to it. It's just, you know, it'll be really easy. I'll just quick sandblast on those and paint them up, and that'll be nice. Screw those back in. Um, you know, this area here, you know, you're not going to see that. The seat's going to be there. So don't really care how that comes out. I might, I might dynamat that or something, and then maybe just put like a... I don't know, a vinyl cover or something over it, or maybe not bother. I uh, just want to, you know, insulate from some road noise. Uh, but that's about it there. You're not going to really see it when the seat's in. And, okay, I think that's about it. Let's uh, go over here. I'll just quickly show you what I used for products, uh, if you want to see that. Uh, so this is that uh, chassis black I was talking about. Seemed to work pretty good and uh, was cheap enough. So great for the floor pans. I'll probably use it like on the underneath part of the fenders and things like that. 
Uh, this was the epoxy primer I used. This is another nascent product. There's a million of these on the market. I'm sure they're all pretty good. Uh, so I did an epoxy primer, and now what, what you saw in there is a filler primer I used. Uh, I'm not real happy with the filler primer. I'm not saying it's a problem with the filler primer, but it's just it's drying so fast. It's kind of spraying on kind of dry. Um, and this is probably, I probably have the wrong nozzle in my gun or, you know, maybe my pressure is not right. You know, there's a lot of things. So I'll talk to the guy at the local paint store and just ask him what I'm doing wrong there. I'm, you know, it's a good, uh, it's a good DuPont or Exalta now. It's a good primer. It's a 2K urethane primer. So I'm sure it's just operator problems. Uh, seam sealer. So this goes on all your... You know, you got body seams and things. Uh, that stuff sets up pretty quick. You can paint over it immediately. So that's uh, pretty good there. And I've shown you this before. My favorite because it's so cheap and easy to use and sticks to anything. Uh, that's great for, you know, full of pans or underneath the car or whatever. I don't know. I've never used it on the body. Uh, probably should I'm just afraid to I don't know it's it's such a old school product and paints have changed I don't know if it would cause a problem with lifting or something but I don't know it uh, the chassis black it, you know went right over it no problem bonded to it great uh, that's the filler I'm using again there's a million fillers and I'm sure they're all great I don't know if this one's any better than any others um, I'm just trying to use as little of it as possible, honestly. Um, and this is pretty cool. I don't know if you've seen these, but I'm kind of one of those guys that always mix the Bondo on the uh, piece of cardboard. You know, I always did it make real Mickey Mouse like, and uh, I got this at the local paint store too. It's just a, it's basically just a pad of paper here. So you mix on it, and then you just peel off the sheet, and you got a clean board and. It's kind of like an artist board, you know, you can put your fingers in here and hold it and while you're going around and doing what you got to do on the car. And uh, so that was, you know, that was a good purchase. Uh, just really helped out, you know, just tired of doing it the Mickey Mouse way with the old cardboard. And they tell you you're not supposed to do that. And, you know, kind of a question if any of you guys are body guys, if you would put in the comments... You know, I've had conversations about filler with friends that do it more than I do, and they said, man, I don't know what's going on, but the newer fillers just seem to crack more and things, and they don't seem to last, and kind of my theory on that was, you know, like I know when you do fiberglass, if you put too much hardener in it, it, it makes it really brittle, and I thought maybe... You know, it's just kind of so easy and everybody's always in a hurry. You know, maybe people are just putting too much hardener in it and maybe that's why. So when you put it out in the sun and, you know, you get the expansion and contraction, especially out here in Texas, uh, maybe that's what's causing the filler to crack. I don't know. I don't know if it matters how much hardener you put in it or not, but I just kind of wondered, and this is a question for anybody that might know, uh, you know, please put it in the comments. You know, is there such thing as using too much hardener and making it brittle where it doesn't flex with the panel anymore? Um, so I don't know, just a theory I've got. So I try not to use too much hardener. I don't mind if it takes an extra 10, 15 minutes to cure. I'm not a production shop, so I don't, I don't really care about any of that. Uh, so I don't know, you know, uh, I, like, I like the comments, I like the questions, I like the constructive comments. Uh, I've seen a few negative Nellies in there that just don't like me, but that's okay, you know. If you don't like me, just watch the videos that much more. You know, it gives you something to do, I guess, if you're that angry in life. Um, you know, we get, I think, 0.01 cent per view, so I've saved up enough money now. I bought a, a microphone, a wireless microphone, which I haven't learned how to use yet, so... Any money this channel does make, I'm going to put it back into the channel. You know, maybe I'll get a K2 
camera stand or something, you know. <laughs> and, you know, we'll just keep putting the money back in. I bought a $35 microphone, and uh, the channel paid for that, you know. How, how cool is that? Now I just got to use it, right? So, okay, guys. Um, I think that's all I got to show you. Uh, so... Hope this kind of inspires you a little bit on your projects to say, hey, if this hat can do it, so can I. And I don't, you know, I don't know how much time I have into this. Yeah, probably since, you know, I did a video on it last. I really hadn't been keeping tabs. I would say maybe, I don't know, eight or ten hours or something. Uh, not, you know, not a tremendous amount of time. I could easily see how you could put a couple hundred hours into it if you wanted to make it really nice. And, I don't know, we'll see. You know, once I sand on this and do a sealer on it, and I might say, man, I better fix some more stuff on it. Because it, it's certainly not perfect, but it's so much better than it was. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the progress, so we'll see. We'll see in the next video. So I'll probably, next video, I'll have this painted, and I'll be working on the frame probably to try to get the frame ready to receive the cab again. And that's probably what I'm going to do, and in between, I'll work on other panels, you know. I'll work on the hood and fenders and all that stuff. The bed is going to be the challenge on this truck. That bed is really rough. And I'm probably going to just live with a lot of it and just say, hey, it's an old pickup truck, you know? It's got bumps and bruises. So we might kind of <laughs> it might kind of pass off the laziness as some sort of nostalgia, you know? Um, I'll think about that a little bit more, but and I'll get the panels put back in here, so that'll close this cab up and all that sort of thing. And start seeing what's actually going to go back in here. I'll get the dash in, and um, I'm going to do an aftermarket AC unit in this. Uh, these old trucks never had AC or anything like that. And, um, all the old heater box and stuff like that. I'll. I'll show you that next time. That stuff's kind of interesting if you haven't seen it before. So, okay, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll keep you posted on this project, and we got some other stuff coming up. Uh, thanks a lot.